Where is the story taking place? The story is taking place in Medina, the city of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The story is taking place a few years after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to the city of Medina. So as you know, there are, at the time, there is the Aus and the Khazraj, which are the two main tribes in the city of Medina. And then there are Jewish tribes also residing in the city of Medina. The Aus and the Khazraj are still overcoming their, uh, you know, their rivalry that they had before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Now this story, subhanAllah, happens after one of the battles. There's a new Muslim. There's a new Muslim who just accepted Islam. You know, people were coming to Islam in stages. And this new Muslim, uh, his name is Bashir. And he has just come to Islam, so he's a little bit, uh, yani he's, he's trying to learn, but he doesn't have, subhanAllah, as uh, much information as the others. There was another individual who was also a more recent comer to Islam. And he went with the Prophet Muhammad Sallam to the battle, and they fought, of course, on the same side, and they were able to, alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah, defeat the enemy. And on their way back, of course, there were many, uh, you know, droppings from the opposing side, as we mentioned before. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he picks the shield, the beautiful shield that was left uh, by some of the, uh, you know, uh, enemies who uh, dropped it. And now the Prophet Muhammad Sallam is trying to find or find somebody that is worthy of this gift of the shield. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he finds this uh, man who also accepted Islam and he's a more recent uh, newcomer to Islam than Bashir and he gives him the shield as a gift and back then of course the people of Medina the people who are coming to Islam uh, knew they did not have much wealth and they were struggling financially so to have a shield was considered something very valuable and so the Prophet Muhammad Sallam saw uh, you know uh, humility and sincerity in this individual so he gave him subhanallah uh, the, the, the shield some of the uh, narrations mentioned that this man who received uh, the shield his name is uh, Rifa'a and so here we see something very interesting Bashir uh, he looks at the Prophet Muhammad Sallam while he is giving the shield to this other man and Bashir feels a little bit uh, jealous he says to himself, well, hold on a second, I'm also a new Muslim, why didn't I get the shield? Uh, what about me? Um, why, why? I deserve something too. And so he decided, you know what, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. When, when, when the man who got the shield, the owner, the rightful owner of the shield, he went home and he put the shield down in his house and he stored it. And he stored it, uh, you know, with the, with the curved side down and the opening up. And then he put some, imagine some uh, flour or some starch on top of it just to keep it mounted. And Bashir decided, you know what, I want the shield for myself. So he said, if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not give it to me, well, I'm going to take action or I'm going to take matters into my own hand. And what he did is he actually decided he intended to steal the shield. So imagine this, subhanAllah, he walks out uh, in the middle of the, uh, the narration, say at, at, the, at, the, at the early part of the night, he walks toward uh, the house of, um, of Rifa'a ibn Nu'man. And what he decides to do, he decides to basically go inside and, uh, you know, uh, some narrations he climbed over the wall, but nonetheless, he entered the house and he picked up the shield and he walked literally out of the door and took the shield back to his house, hoping that nobody could see him. Unfortunately, the person who stole the shield and the person who, uh, the rightful owner of the shield, they are from two different tribes, the Aus and the Khazraj. And now here's a, a difficult situation because when this, if, if this were to become public, uh, this could be blown out of proportion by the hypocrites of the city of Medina and they would actually try to uh, get the two sides to uh, go against each other and try to basically uh, create uh, the fitna that existed before the Prophet Muhammad uh, came to Medina. So this is a bit of a tense situation that could cause uh, almost a civil war uh, between the two tribes if it were to be blown out of proportion. And remember there were hypocrites in the city of Medina that were waiting for any opportunity between the Aus and the Khazraj to try to basically cause conflict between the two tribes subhanallah with the intention of uh, you know undermining that the unity that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is trying to establish so what happens uh, as bashir is going with with the shield uh, trying to steal the shield he gets subhanallah caught to, uh, by by one person 
who happens to be the uncle or a, a, a relative of the person who the shield was stolen from, the rightful owner of the shield. So imagine the uncle of the guy who owns the shield, he sees Bashir stealing the shield. And when he sees this, of course, he gets uh, a bit upset and he confronts Bashir. But Bashir says no and he runs away and he basically says, it's, it's your word against mine, nobody will ever know. And so he decides to basically uh, go ahead and keep the shield to himself. And he thought, hoping that subhanAllah, uh, you know, nobody would eventually find out and, 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 and it wouldn't just, it wouldn't uh, be uh, something too, too large, he, he assumed at least. Other narrations say that, you know, he was caught, but the individual, the uncle who did catch him, did not approach him about it. Rather, he tried to basically go directly to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when he went directly to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I have come to you to tell you that I have witnessed with my own eyes an act of theft. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was disappointed to hear this in his own city. The Aus and the Khazraj stealing from one another, he was very, very disappointed to hear that. And he was wary because he knew that if this wasn't controlled and if this information got into the hands of the wrong people, they would use it as a, as a, as a means to create propaganda and of course cause a stir in the community. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what does he do? He sends investigators to investigate. So the investigators come to uh, you know, Bashir's house and they knock on his door and they come and they say, well, news has reached us that you know, something in your house uh, may not necessarily belong to you. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam is requesting your permission to search. They came into the house of Bashir. Bashir said, come on in, no problem, I have nothing to hide. And they came into the house and they looked everywhere, but they couldn't find the shield. They go back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they tell him, Ya Rasulullah, we looked everywhere but we could not find the shield. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, was a little bit uh, confused at what, you know, what happened, who took it. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, was, you know, sent the investigators to investigate a little further. Bashir knew that the investigators would eventually, subhanAllah, uh, you know, get their hands onto something. So he wanted to prevent the investigators from you know, uh, researching further and he wanted to give them uh, or make it easier for them or just put an end to the situation. So what did he do? Imagine, he committed a, a, an even greater crime than the crime of theft, subhanAllah. And what does he do? He comes to a few of his family members, he brings three witnesses and he tells them, please help me out here come with me, let's go to the Prophet Muhammad Sallam or go to the Prophet Muhammad Sallam yourselves and tell the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it was actually uh, a Jewish man who stole the shield, a man known by the name Zaid. And he blames this innocent Jewish man. Uh, of course, he did have a, a previous uh, problem with theft. You know, he may have committed a minor offense before. So it was easily believable. It was like, okay, let's blame somebody who had, a, a, you know, a, a criminal record before. Although minor, it would still be more believable. And Bashir thought he could get away with it. And so what does Bashir do? Bashir actually, uh, he, he sends for some people to bury the shield in the yard or in the garden of this innocent uh, man who happens to be from the Jewish faith. And now when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is approached by the three witnesses to get them to uh, testify or uh, you know, basically witness uh, for Bashir and against the Jewish man, they decided to go to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and tell him, Ya Rasulullah, we're just here to give you uh, a, a word uh, of advice. We just want to you know, keep the city uh, ha you know, uh, peaceful and, and calm and we want to eliminate any uh, difficulty or any uh, issues and what we want to do is we want to actually tell you that the person who stole the shield is a Jewish man by the name Zaid. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard this, he sent again a few more investigators to investigate. These investigators would go to the house of the Jewish man Zaid, knock on his door and tell him we have come to look through your house because news has reached us that you may have perhaps uh, you know something in your house that may not belong to you. And so the Jewish man of course he did not, he had no idea what is going on and so he said no problem at all, go ahead come and search, there's nothing to hide. And they came in and they searched and what did they find? They actually subhanallah found the shield hidden in, uh, in the house or buried in the house of this Jewish man. So based on appearance, it seemed like it was actually the Jewish man who stole the shield. Now subhanallah, this is very interesting. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam would eventually uh, you know, be uh, told by these investigators that he sent, we went, we investigated, and the reality is yes, we did find 
the uh, shield in the Jewish man's home. The Prophet Muhammad was upset and he was upset for a few reasons. Num number one, he was upset because uh, the uncle, remember the uncle that was related to the person uh, that the shield was stolen from, remember he came and he blamed Bashir. He said, I saw Bashir with my own eyes. The Prophet Muhammad you know, he thought that this was being done to create tension between the Aws and the Khazraj when in reality that's not what happened. It was, you know, supposedly a Jewish man who stole the shield. So the Prophet Muhammad was upset and he actually came on the mimbar and he gave us a, a, a lecture or a reminder for the Muslim community, stay connected, stay united, do not blame one another, do not go back to the ways of the Jahiliya, have trust towards one another. Now things get interesting. Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, uh, you know, issues an arrest warrant for the Jewish man based on the evidence. And the Jewish man is arrested uh, even though he was innocent. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, after delivering uh, his talk, he went back uh, and, and the Prophet Muhammad Sallam uh, went to sleep. And when he went to sleep, uh, he woke up as, as he used to for, for his qiyam. And uh, that's when he received the revelation uh, from Jibreel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, O Messenger of Allah, we have given you the book so that you may rule between the people that are going to come to you based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown you. And don't ever be a backbone for the people who are going to uh, be wrongdoers. Don't ever be a supporter. Don't be uh, somebody who will uh, back up and, 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 and defend or argue on behalf of those who are deceiving themselves. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those who are going to be deceitful and sinners. Do istighfar. Say, oh Allah, forgive me. Who, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Bashir. Bashir is walking around, hiding, stealing the shield. He's thinking he's hiding from people. He cannot hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them every step of the way. One Bashir was planning, one Bashir came and he offered a bribe, a bribe to basically get those witnesses to testify on his behalf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of the whole situation. Here you are, you were able to defend them in this world. But who is going to come and dare defend them or you know, argue on their behalf in the day of resurrection? This is a very important story, my brother, my sister. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us here that even though we may get away with committing a crime in this world, you will be held accountable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can bribe your way, get your witnesses. Allah gives Bashir an opportunity to repent. And now the Prophet Muhammad sallam, as soon as he receives these ayat, as soon as the revelation comes, he comes and goes to the uh, Salat al-Fajr. He prays the uh, Fajr uh, prayer. And as soon as he uh, prays Fajr, he sits uh, down with the companions or he gets up on the mimbar and he begins to recite the ayat. And he indicates to the companions that of course uh, Bashir is the actual culprit and that the Jewish man is innocent. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam sets free the Jewish man and of course some compensation is paid to the Jewish man for the damage that was inflicted uh, wrongly. But here we see Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's justice prevails all justice. Now when Bashir uh, finds out that he's been found out, uh, he unfortunately uh, does a very very terrible thing. Rather than coming in and repenting and asking for forgiveness, he begins to uh, plan his runaway. And he runs away from the city of Medina and he says, you know what, I'm going to go back to the people of Mecca who hate the Prophet Muhammad anyway, sallallahu alayhi wa and maybe I'll, found, I'll find refuge there. And unfortunately, subhanAllah, he meets a terrible fate, uh, unfortunately for him, but fortunately uh, for uh, those the innocent people who had uh, to deal with the, subhanAllah, the, the, the difficulty that he placed upon everybody. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, basically uh, shows us here in, in, in the way that Bashir uh, dies, in the way that the Bashir, Bashir passes away, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's justice uh, is always going to uh, prevail. And Bashir, as he's running away from Medina to Mecca, he gets caught by a wild beast and the wild beast actually devours him. And this is the outcome, the outcome of the person who commits a crime like that, thinks that person is getting away and then blames somebody else. And then rather than, even though Allah invited him, Allah gave him an invitation, come and repent and there is forgiveness for you. He says, no, 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 no. I'm gonna go back to the people and find refuge in humans who will help me. All oh, you who believe, stand firmly, be firm, stand up for justice. Stand up for right, stand up for truth, and, and, and be witnesses for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it is against yourselves, or against those who are relatives, or against those who are near. 
or against your parents. Can you imagine? I want you to imagine your dad committed a crime. And you know your dad committed a crime. Or your mother committed a crime. Or your brother committed a crime. Or your sister. Or your uncle. Or your neighbor. Or someone that you love. Your spouse committed a crime. And now that person is, you know, arrested. And now you, subhanAllah, have the opportunity to come out and say things that are not true. And you will basically be able to bail or get that person out by your testimony. Would you testify falsely or would you subhanAllah stay firm to the truth regardless of any pressure? That is an important question. And Allah teaches us here the real sense of justice. Whether that person is rich or that person is, is poor, your duty belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to anybody else. Do not follow your own desires and your own whims. Do not follow any of that. Stay and remain firmly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.